Bjarko. Awesome. So, um... We just explained what this mission is about, right? They're yep. looking for a radio, they're looking to retrieve it. So if you just tuned into our stream, yeah, we welcome for like that, fifth developer update stream. Right now, we have four developers behind us, two system it. designers, two QA, thinking they're cool, <laughs> playing on hard difficulty. <laughs> so we'll see. They, they, are cool. like, they are cool. They are cool. They're cool. They're cool. They're cool. Absolutely. So, uh, no offense to anybody. <laughs> All right. So we're, what's happening now? So right now they are. Um, they need to locate the the bandit camp where the family is uh, is hiding, mm -hmm. and you know they took just here a small room for some extra loot. Mm -hmm. You can see there, like grand yeah, marking up for board. others. Yeah. So um, and like we said, walkers they spawn randomly, right? So uh, sometimes there's a ton of walkers here, sometimes there's few, and, uh, yeah. and so on. So you always have a different. So ooh, this is one of the special workers we spoke to. If the, the family's been through here, yeah, they must have left a clue about their plans or location. Like they removed their helmet everywhere. to be able to hit hmm. their head. Now they need a bit of noise, uh, so workers are getting excited. And quickly for anyone who just tuned in for the first time, uh, noise, how does that affect gameplay? So, in the middle of the screen on top you see what we call the hordometer. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you generate too much noise, this starts growing mm -hmm. and you don't want that to go up, right? Mm. Uh, when it goes up, uh, it has different levels or intensities, mm. right? Um, and then workers start, start spawning, right? Mm. And it's a horde, so um, they're gonna keep coming over and over and over <laughs> until you complete the mission, right? So um, that's... A very, very fun thing that we've seen, like uh, a player discovering and experimenting with the hordometer, right? Trying to keep it low, uh, always, right? At the beginning they go a bit like a Rambo style, yeah. and then like, oh shit, this is important, right? Yeah. So then they start like Water. being more cautious, playing more silently or stealthy, mm. right? And then trying to keep the hordometer uh, to trigger as late as possible, right? Mm. Because then horses start coming, and then the only thing you can do is like just run. Yeah, yeah. And try to evade them. Yeah. yeah, utilizing parkour skills and other things, yeah. <laughs> jumping over objects. Yeah. And for me, I think this this uh, the hordometer is so important because one, it stays true to the Walking Dead universe. I think that's been so important for us during production, yeah. and for Robert also, uh, seeing as we designed it all together with him, but also. Uh, it provides a dynamic oh, difficulty. They, they burned each other there. <laughs> what happened? So, uh, um, it threw a, somebody threw a molotov. dropped a, a Molotov yeah. uh, grant. That's Tyler. <laughs> yeah. Of course he did. That's awesome. So, uh, and what are they doing now? They're looking to open a gate. So yeah, they are looking for a way to, to get that uh, gate open. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case here, uh, they need to get fuel that uh, they need to put back into that lift, that forklift, and then Open the open the door, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the guys are exploring the environment, checking out. Oh, look at that! Heather found a, oh, yeah. uh, or was it Grant? Grant found a, a weapon case. These um, these are very important part of our meta loop. Yeah. So um, you have hidden in all levels uh, weapon and mod cases uh, or chests that you need to open with mm -hmm. one of your toolkits, mm -hmm. and then with that, if you extract it, then you get that as a bonus at the end, right? Mm. Um, so this, is a, this adds a lot of replayability and adds a lot as well of, uh, of interest on checking every corner, right? So do you get it only if you succeed or do you get it also if you fail the mission? If you fail, you don't get it. Oh, right? okay. Like so. you need to actually extract it from the map, you yeah. need to put it in Caleb's bag. So it gives people another incentive to really exactly. finish the mission properly. Exactly. And this is something we've seen in some streams, right? They were like, you know, being relaxed and whatnot, like mm. experimenting a bit. Somebody mm. finds a weapon case, like, oh my god! Now and we have to play serious. Everybody's yeah. focused and yeah. just goes like to yeah. the exit, right? Mm. Because they really want that weapon mm. or that mod, right? Mm. Depending on what you find. Right. The positions obviously are randomized, mm -hmm. so then every on every run you need to explore, and this is a way for us as well to to invite players to exploration, right? Yeah. To discover every corner of, of our level. Yeah, and also to invite them to trouble. <laughs> because yeah, exactly. someone will go by themselves. Yeah. Oh, I found a weapon case, and they left the group, you know. And yeah, actually, I, we've even seen like people like, okay, who has a weapon case, right? It goes down, and yeah. everybody goes like banana. Not about him or resurrecting, choose the weapon case. Yeah, right. And yeah, that's very fun. Right, so that's that's why you want friends, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. To abandon you, you lose the weapon case. Oh, here we have one of the traps. 
Yeah, yeah there, is, um, there is noise traps. Uh, that one creates noise if you touch it. So, um, oh, sorry, they are in a very... Okay, that was a very cool sync. So, as you've seen there, they've synced for that kill mm. uh, to avoid uh, the humans, uh, the family, mm. to detect them, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, because if you kill one, the other automatically gets alerted. Yeah. So, he goes in, starts scanning the environment looking for you mm -hmm. and uh, aggros other. Um, yeah, so if you AIs. don't take care of him, what happens then? They, they will go so and uh, grab attention. Then okay. shit hits the fan. Yeah, okay. That's what happens. It properly hits the fan. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, uh, you might alert the, a whole base if you yeah. do a mistake. And like you might be as good as these guys because the hordometer is, is still cool, zero, right? It's yeah. still at zero. But uh, if you if you disrupt a, a, bandit, a group of bandits and they start firing at you, the noise meter goes up. Right? Yes. Like, the noise is. Uh, all the noises generated in this. Uh, in these levels are oh, uh, are it doesn't matter where they come from. It can can come from the environment, like a car alarm, mm. like anything that you touch that makes noise, right? Mm. It can come from enemy AI. It can mm. come from other players yourself, right? So you basically want nobody to make noise mm. or nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to be very cautious as well, yeah. not to step on on a trap that makes sound or anything that can trigger the horde, mm. right? It's important to keep check on loose cannons in your group of survivors, right? Who yeah. like, like, oh, I just want to try this weapon out. Do it on your own time, you know? <laughs> Not when we're playing for it. Especially if we find loot. Yeah, it, it's funny, we play a lot as well ourselves with, uh, with uh, the community. Mm -hmm. So we just randomly jump into, into playthroughs. Like, mm -hmm. we just go in, matchmake, uh, and try to, you know, experience the game with people, right? And yes, I've, uh, myself, I've played with a couple of Rambos. And, but it's quite fun, you know, they go, it's just banana, like yeah. start shooting everything, and I'm just oh, trying to fix it behind. Yeah. Uh, it's quite fun. Indeed. Okay, so now they're approaching the, the, the big inner camp. perimeter. Yeah, they're yeah. infiltrating the inner perimeter. So you see there that that indicator uh, marks that the enemies heard something. Mm. So they are approaching and they are checking where the shot comes from mm. to try to, you know, discover what what generated that noise, right? Mm. So they are looking for you, basically. Mm. So um, here, okay, now mm. they got they got discovered. There you go. Okay, Aiden there as a tank. Oh, nice switch. Good. Nice switch to melee there, right? Yeah. And it also helped the fact that uh, that there was the the grenade, the smoke grenade mm -hmm. that uh, Heather dropped there, mm -hmm. to because with the smoke grenade that slows down the reaction time of the AI, oh, okay. and it depends as well of how much you have upgraded it. Right. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, uh, the reaction time is pretty low, as you've seen here. Mm -hmm. They were still very effective, but then they start coughing, and then yeah, and that's why we talked about uh, level caps before, right? Because the game has RPG elements, role-playing elements, yep. where we you you go from level to level, and when you get another level, you can choose new skills, etc. Exactly. Can you tell us a bit about that? So yeah. It, it's uh, it, we have a lot All of right, RPG elements in mm -hmm. our game, so you you need to level up your characters by playing. Every time that you play a mission, either you fail or complete it, you get mm -hmm. some XP. Of course, if you complete it, you get more XP. Mm -hmm. And if uh, if you uh, keep playing higher and higher difficulty, the XP obviously mm -hmm. grows with that. Mm -hmm. And then um, that level ups your characters. Um, that gives you skill points that you can spend in your skill tree. Mm. Every character has its own skill tree mm. with unique abilities mm. and unique perks. Mm. And then you go there, you'd say, okay, I'm gonna take this path, like more tanky path mm. or uh, yeah, like more support, damage dealer path, yeah. exactly. Mm. And then so that's for each of the characters. Mm. So then you level them up, put the skill trees there, mm. uh, sorry, the skill points there. Mm. And then um, that gives you access to better weapons mm. with higher rarity, mm. right? You start with like the most common type of weapons and then you end up with like super uh, amazing uh, weapons, right? Mm. And mm. that's something that you need to level up yourself to mm. then uh, find those weapons. And the cool thing is that every time you play a level, you have a, um, a reward, uh, like a warranted reward uh, with weapons of a specific level uh, linked to the difficulty. But uh, the weapon cases and the mod cases that you find in the maps, those adapt dynamically to your level character, right? Uh, so then this way, uh, what we achieve with this is that what, what we saw in the streams, like mm. people getting super excited mm. when they find a weapon that. case or a mod case. Mm. 
Of course, there is caps per difficulty, so you cannot find the best weapon in normal. Mm. You need to have a very high level character and play the hardest difficulty to get the final, the final showdown weapon. Yeah. Right? Or mods. So yeah, here the guys, they, they went down into the underpass. They're trying to deal with those walkers while opening the, the gate. And uh, uh, moving forward as a group. We have Heather this. being a bit behind, but uh, they're uh, close enough to each other to help each other out if something uh, hits the fan. <laughs> and it's important to really look through the environment. Like you can see here, they're looking through uh, trucks and other spaces to make sure they find everything they need, whether it be loot or yeah, something exactly. that... Like th that is randomized as well, the type of blockers that mm. you find on the way mm. um, and the paths uh, are randomized as well, what we call the 10%. Mm. So every time that you play, you have a different experience, right? Mm. You have walkers, you have bandits, you have puzzles, and you have uh, paths uh, as well that can change. Mm. So this way we always keep it fresh, right? Mm. Mm. So now they're going down they are below the camp the camp uh, from the family is just on top of of these uh, yeah. tunnels right of these maintenance and they're yeah. doing really well hey, yeah so far the, the hardometer is like zero they, so they really accepted the challenge <laughs> they really accepted the challenge and this is the, the thing with the with the game that we've seen a lot right people start the game and they go rambo style mm. and then Hardometer goes up, so oh my god! So they start learning. <laughs> they start yeah. learning that if you keep learning it by quiet, doing, yeah. yeah. Like the I'll the longer it. you can keep that hardometer down, the more chances you have to succeed. Or learning by burning and learning through reflection, yeah, for sure. So uh, if you move together as a group, as tight in it as this is, then then um, it looks easy, but it's not. I mean, this this group of people have been playing this game yeah. for a long time. Yeah. They they've been playing the game for a long time, yeah. Mm. And um, as you saw just right now, Maya, uh, she crafted, um, you know, a, a bandage mm -hmm. to heal herself and also a, a chemical kit. Mm. Uh, you have in the game uh, locks that lock uh, loot, uh, paths, rooms, and all of those are also randomized. Mm. So, and you unlock new toolkits um, in your camp, right? So you upgrade mm. your camp, everything that you pick up here mm. has a purpose, which is upgrading your camp. And then with those upgrades, you can actually uh, unlock uh, toolkits that you can use in the mission. So if you're playing the level and, and you find, oh, this requires a wire cutter, for mm. instance, mm. right? Mm. Like Heather right now, she has a wire cutter. Mm. Or Gran, he has a mechanical kit, right? So if you find those blockers, it means that you need to go back to your camp, unlock those toolkits, come back to the game, and then you will be able to access that zone, right? Mm -hmm. So this is important. And oh wait, there's a tension moment there. Right now, they know that if they get detected here, that uh, shit can hit the fan very fast. With the okay. So maybe a couple of stealth kills there on the band. Yeah. So one. There you go. Take the, the one. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Mod case. Oh, we found a mod case too. Oh, get it, get it, get it. He ducked! <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker. Yeah, the, the human AI sometimes, uh, I mean, they are quite dangerous. So sometimes they, they they have a chance to avoid your bullets, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like Matrix style. Mm -hmm. They just see you that you're gonna shoot and they hook. They just crouch. Yeah. So you can just trigger boom and lose a bullet, right? Yeah. And this You'll is a cool, no yeah, a cool feature that we've seen also in the streams that when it happens, people go like, oh my god! Yeah, right? because it bullets are fun. scarce. You don't have uh, as many bullets as maybe people have played other first person shooters and they're used to being able to spray and pray. But you have yeah, to exactly. be careful how you use ammunition in these story missions, exactly. like listening in. Exactly. Uh, at the end, uh, you know, you are not a, a, a Rambo or a, mm. you know, super professional military that goes there mm. with your chopper full equipped, like all the no. guns. You're, and all you're that. a group of a four clip. civilians who, exactly. who, who've uh, been part of the outbreak and are trying exactly. to make do. Yeah. And trying right now here uh, in this camp, for instance, they are stealing ammo from from the family, mm. uh, equipment there as well for the camp. Mm. Uh, those work as supplies, and. Um, but they are going through the level, trying to get as much as they can from them, right? Mm -hmm. um, with their main objective, uh, finding and stealing the, the radio, right? Mm -hmm. Maya is deploying a health pack to get the team back up and running. 
the health pack also, like all abilities, uh, can be uh, upgraded and it increases the effect, it increases the amount of usages. It depends a lot on each mm. of, the, of the core abilities of each character. Okay. Here they're, oh, they're taking this path. Okay, that's interesting. Why is that interesting? Well, there is a, a couple of ways you can approach this level. Mm. Um, and this one here, as you can see from Maya's point of view, is not very safe, <laughs> workers wise, but it's true that there is no humans here, and as they are trying to keep the hordometer low, mm. uh, actually it's a good choice. But, uh, but it's not gonna be easy. <laughs> so there you go. Now they need to do a small cleanup phase. Yeah. Oh, nice one. And it's take down. So Heather with the pickaxe. And they're making mo more and more noise as they go along, aren't they? You can well, see it on the top there. Right now, uh, somebody triggered... Uh, triggered uh, is it a noise trap? Oh, so one one of the family was there. Are they coming down? Are they coming down? Some are... Okay, so they, okay, let's use the they, are, they are coming now. Now it's becoming more challenging, right? This is like uh, this is a tense situation right now. Yeah. And the interesting thing. Uh, Looking at gameplay like this is that the difficulty not only is it dynamic through the the hordometer But also like how the four of you play because it's designed as a co-op game sure you can play by yourself yeah. You know and difficulty scales depending on how many players you are so if you're playing by yourself It's one way if you're playing four people It's another and of course it also depends on what difficulty you chose, you know now we're playing hard so uh, when when uh, the going gets tough it gets really tough fast yeah, actually, this is a question that, that we've received a lot. Can I play the game alone? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, um, thanks Fisk for for uh, for the stream it was amazing. Yeah, like he just tried to go and like solo the game uh, over and over, mm. and it was very cool. Like uh, seeing how he managed to actually complete Hell or High Water. I don't know how many times. Like, yeah. but we were just watching there yeah. with the team. It was like. It was very cool. Mm. And um, yeah, when you play alone, there is a couple of um, ways that we do to help you out. Uh, of course, we scale the difficulty, but also um, we allow you to have revives, get right? Mm. So when you're playing cop, you can die uh, up to three times before you get into the you know, waiting zone, right? Mm. Like you just go in spectator mode for a while and then you come back to the game. And when you're playing alone, what we do is that you have, you can, when you die, you get respawned in the last checkpoint, right? So then that's something that you can use, um, you know, when the level gets really tough, mm. you get killed, you respawn and you can continue. Right? Okay. But it depends a lot on the tactics. Obviously the builds, the, uh, as we said before, uh, the RPG elements that we have, right? If you play as a group, you will go with a specific build set, mm. complementing your friends, right? Mm. Or other characters. And if you go alone, you're gonna build a different type of, uh, of character yeah. and, and skill set. Right? Yeah. And what kind of weapons you pick to uh, to bring with you in into the mission? Also, yeah. Like, and the the good thing is that all of the characters are good for stealth, right? Mm. Uh, Heather, being a scout, you have a bit of an edge there, but then Maya has the uh, back, yeah, the medical back, right? Yeah. So. Uh, what do you do? What do you choose? Like more health or mm. more sneaky, right? Yeah, it's Aiden up to you to more decide. Life, right? Yeah. And Aiden has a, a bigger health bar, so he resists more, right? So that's also a good choice, right? And then you have Gran with his sniper rifle that you can kill from afar and be very, you know, like sneaky. sneaky. Yeah. So uh, any choice oh, yeah. is good, actually. Uh, all the characters are able to go um, into full combat or stealthy, mm. but of course uh, your playstyle changes depending on who you are mm. playing with. Mm. So there you go. Now they got the elevator, so they are trying to get up. And they're the really floor. close to filling one level of oh, the yeah. hordometer. That is really, really close, yeah. 
So does the hordometer, does it ever go down or will it stay there? So they can't get it down. They have to be really careful not to activate the next step. Yeah. So they cannot get it down. Um, and this is one of the key elements, right? Mm. Because then imagine that we will make it go down, right? Mm. It goes down. So what will people do? Right now they will wait in this elevator. Yeah, for 10 minutes. For 10 minutes until it's zero, right? Yeah. That is not fun. No. So it keeps growing up as mm. soon as they make um, make the uh, noise, mm. right? Or enemies make noise, or now the, the environment makes noise, right? the And then they so need to actually it. adapt and advance, right? Mm. Mm. Never stop, like just always for, uh, move forward. And one of the things, uh, if this is the first time you're watching gameplay from Walk of the Walking Dead, is uh, you'll see as we switch from player to player, next to the numbers of how much ammunition you have on the bottom left corner, there's a small slider that is a bit white and uh, has a larger red portion. Yeah. That's your silencer, right? That's the silencer, which is about to go down. Yeah. And, and what uh, happens then? So, so if they if they make noise now, um, uh, what well, just happened? Happy, you know. um, then. You know, the hordometer goes up, right? So but the silencers allow you to actually hide uh, hide the noise, right? Mm. Uh, but they have a durability, right? Mm. And this depends also on the type of mod, uh, silencer mod that yeah. you find. And that, that's what I wanted to get at, because the durability was um, if Grant would shoot another time now, the silencer would break, right? I'm reloading! Exactly. So then, of course, you have weapons like the crossbow, but that by default they are always silent, yeah. right? Uh, but um, they, it has a curve, right? Hey, like the, the, like the bolt just has a curve down, yeah. so you need to be very precise. That's why in the scopes you have these three dots, mm. so you can calculate hey, by distance, right? Mm. It helps you out a bit there. Well, like the real crossbows, we then reinvent the wheel here. <laughs> and um, and then you have the revolvers. The revolvers, obviously, they don't have, they cannot have uh, silencers. Well, there is a couple there. in real life that have it, and we will add it at some point. Yeah. But um, in general, revolvers don't have uh, silencer, but they have a huge kickback, right? Yeah. So you hit the enemy with that, and it's like boom! Yeah. Uh, you got a, a, you know, a very strong pushback, right? Mm. And a big damage, yeah. but with the perk that the sound they make sound, right? So you see here, they are trying to reduce uh, the defenses mm. from from the family here, and they've uh, they're already uh, past one level on the hordometer. Yeah. And they're going, they're steady moving on, you know, making more noise as they go along. But sometimes it's inevitable. You have to make noise at some situations, yeah. right? In order not to make even more noise. Yeah. And actually, even sometimes uh, we've seen players online using that uh, against the uh, human AI, right? Yeah. Like uh, using the walkers uh, to to entertain or even kill other humans, yeah. which is quite. Uh, this is how we build the game, right? Like mm. you have uh, three factions uh, at any point in time which is you and your group. Mm. And you have the human AI, the family. Mm. The bandits, yeah. And then you have uh, the workers, yeah. right? The and constant threat. Everybody wants to kill everybody. Yeah. <laughs> for, for different reasons. That's like, a good way to the, say it. Yeah. yeah. The most honest one is the workers, they just want to eat. Yeah, right? they just want to eat, yeah. They're, they, are, they are the most uh, dangerous, but uh, you know, the, the most honest ones. Mm. So we have one out of the three of the radio parts right now. Looking to access. Oh, oh, oh. My God, here we go. Okay. So now. Grant needs help. He just threw a Molotov. Take care of a group of walkers. Because Molotovs deal AoE damage, right? Yep. Area of effect. You ready? Now fire the flare and get out of there. Fire's dropping the. The, the flare gun? Oh, what does that do? So the flare gun calls Caleb. Mm. And Caleb is gonna come back uh, right now with the ban. Another survivor from our camp? Yes. The Anderson it's camp? one of the main NPCs. Yeah. And it's uh, an essential part of our. Of, of our camp, of right? our group, yeah. yeah. So here they go. So he, he he's waiting in a safe area yes. for our uh, our flare. So when we shoot the flare, he knows he needs to come in and, and, and rescue us. Because of, I mean, he couldn't come before, right? With all the family, he would have gotten shot. Yeah. So the flare is a way for you to indicate that hey, now it's clear, yeah. coming. Well, clear of humans because yeah. there is always walkers around, right? Precisely. You can never clear walkers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, the more bandits you kill, right, the more workers you get, so... Yeah, true that. So there you go. So right now, they, they got all the pieces, they are going down. Uh, and this is the like the ebb and flow gameplay we're talking about. So now there's a calm moment, they're utilizing an elevator that's still working proper. 
and now we see what's gonna happen. So when they get out, there is a new troop of walkers here, attracted by the sound that they made. That's a, that's a, that's a power attack from Maya, where you just cut the head off that walker. Yeah. And as you can see, um, every weapon has different light attacks and heavy attacks. Mm. Light attacks is just left click. Yeah. Um, if you keep it pressed, you have uh, heavy attacks, and you can do combos with that, mm. like combining like two lights, one heavy, mm. one heavy, two lights, whatever. And um, and then uh, every weapon has its own timings, stamina consumption. Mm. So you need to try different weapons, see what you prefer to use, right? Yeah. And always you have your panic button, like right click, uh, you will just show up, right? So there you go, they made it. Do we start? Okay, yeah, yeah let's go so, uh, All right, what are we watching, Sal? Tell me. So this is uh, the, the camp defense level uh, in Anderson camp. As you guys can see, they are just, uh, they are very good players, so they are rushing around to just get those defenses up. So as you can see, the barbed wire, um, it's one of the one of the different defense mechanisms that you have, uh, and you can when you upgrade your camp, you actually unlock more defense mechanisms. Uh, we have uh, barbed wire, we have explosive barrels, we have uh, what we call the scrap cannon. It's a mm, very cool one. Mm, mm. Uh, a bit OP, I will say, but you know that's mm. that's for players to figure it out. Yes. Uh, and this is something that we are not limiting in the beta. So um, if you play and you upgrade your camp. Um, you can actually have access to all these defense mechanisms, right? Um, as you can see, right now they are getting in, in the prepara preparation phase. It just finished it right now, so the first wave of workers is going to come in. Mm -hmm. uh, they are taking all of them uh, strategical positions to see, you know, where the waves are going to start coming from. Yeah. Um, and then uh, in this regard, as you guys can see, they came in uh, from gate B, uh, here uh, Grant used his cocktail Molotov mm -hmm. to actually kill a couple of uh, workers at once, and they are trying to repair the doors, right? So, what basically what you have to to think about, right? What are the key strategical elements to think about when you are defending your camp? You mm -hmm. need to, of course, get ammo. So, be aware where the ammo uh, um, boxes are, so yeah. you have them always closed and yeah. make sure that. Take a, you know, with your peripheral vision, check your ammo. And you have to position yourself also, right? Because it, it being a four-player co-op game, the, the missions are designed in such a way that you have to work together, you have to strategize together. Exactly. Especially As you in can one see of these here, defenses. For instance, the, there is, a, there is a, basically how they are playing it is like uh, two are covering, yeah. uh, shooting the zombies. Yeah. Meanwhile, the other two are repairing the door. Yeah. Which is another key strategical element of this level. Yeah. You need Teamwork. To, Teamwork, <laughs> but also uh, know where the planks, the wood planks are, mm, right? Mm. So you need to pick up the wood planks, and with those, you, are, you it's how you actually can repair the different gates that yeah. break. Right? Oh, there, another one broke. Yep. Uh, this is uh, until uh, until you don't clean, the, clean up this uh, horde of workers. Uh, yes, you need to to keep you know playing smart, like deciding when you wanna actually. Uh, Take a break, let's say, to pick mm. up, to let's say, uh, pick up um, planks, ammo, uh, looting resources, because you actually can also craft here in your camp. Of course, it's not like when you go outside when you need to look everywhere. Yeah, this is your camp, so you have your, yeah, you have several spots in which you have looting resources that you can just pick up and craft uh, more grenades or. Um, Healing packs, etc. Yeah. So it's like, well, you're at your home, so you have a lot of tools at your disposal, basically. So uh, there are different ways you can attack the enemies. You can attack them through melee. There are different melee weapons and, and with different reach. Like, for example, you can use a stick and you have a further reach, right? And you can baseball bat and so on. But with this kind of mission, are some weapons preferred than others? Because it feels like here a shotgun should work so well because there's so many yeah. walkers. Everywhere. Of course, the, here you don't care that much about the noise that or the sound that you're generating, mm -hmm. right? So you probably will go for the weapons that have either a higher RPM, mm -hmm. like uh, SMGs, uh, M4s, mm -hmm. or uh, weapons that have a 
huge kickback like a shotgun, as you were saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, my favorite one is indeed going with a shotgun here. Yeah. Uh, and a pistol is always handy because it has a higher RPM. Because so with a shotgun, it just, it, it just feels so good. Like yeah. When, yeah. It feels very good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, like uh, when you go outside in the in the wall, not just in the wood camp, mm -hmm. uh, you also want to use that shotgun. Yeah. It's indeed satisfying. Uh, but you will probably, um, or you should at least, uh, try to get a silencer for it. Mm. So then uh, you always are sneaky, so you don't call the horde, right? Mm. Because it's different when you're defending your camp, you're ready, you have mm. all your resources handy. Mm. But when you're out in the wild, you yeah. know, anywhere in the middle of Washington, D.C., yeah. like, good luck finding a... Uh, not being current, right? Yeah, now. because you get kind of spoiled here on resources almost in comparison <laughs> yeah. to some missions. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, as you can see, uh, they're uh, closing the, the gates right now. Um, there are different waves with different intensities that are increasing, uh, increasingly higher, right? And, um, and as you can see, the, the Grant, for instance, in this mission is using more often uh, his revolver mm -hmm. instead of, the, of uh, his hunting or sniper rifle, uh, because, you know, like, it has a very high RPM and actually, <laughs> it has a very good, good kickback too, almost like a shotgun. And it looks really good too, which is important. Really At least for me when I play video games. I have to look cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, uh, how long, I mean, if we look at the, the UI, so there's on the top of the right, it says keep the gates closed, and it says 9.30. So that means that they have to defend for almost 10 minutes? Uh, so the, there is a time limit. Mm -hmm. um, if you go faster on that timer, we don't make you wait. Okay. Right? So it's not time based, it's actually um, action based. So you need to defend the gates uh, as, they, as they get open, and mm -hmm. then you have a time limit. So mm -hmm. uh, in case that you don't close the gates in that timer, then yes, that's on this condition, right? Oh, okay. Obviously, this timer is shorter as the difficulty goes up, because mm -hmm. the things get harder and harder. Mm -hmm. Here we are playing in normal, mm -hmm. um, but for instance, in overkill, you have more walkers, less time, so you need to really be very well coordinated with what, each other. What kind of difficulties do you have in the game? So we have uh, different difficulties. We have normal, mm -hmm. which is the, what we're seeing right now. And that's the easiest difficulty. Normal. This is, uh, yes, but we don't call it easy because no. it's not easy. Yeah, because it's <laughs> so, normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else? It's, what, it's how we, we think that, that when you start a game is the best way to, to yeah, approach to it. To play right? it for the first but time. But we yeah. give you a warning, not saying easy. It's mm -hmm. normal. <laughs> um, and then uh, we have hard. Yeah. Very hard and overkill. Of course. Right. Yeah. So, so four different difficulties. Yeah, and then overkill is like it's really really tough. Yeah. And obviously we're watching four people play here together, but you can play three people, you can play two yes. people, one person. And the difficulty scales depending on how many people you play, and also what kind of difficulty you've chosen. So if you've chosen, I don't think during the closed beta we only allow people to play normal. Right? Yes, because yeah. we want to make sure that, the, and this is another of our objectives, right? Yeah. That the normal difficulty is indeed yet. well balanced for starters, mm -hmm. right? And so we want to focus on it. Yeah. Uh, and then after, we will see if we might unlock yeah. uh, new difficulties in, uh, in, uh, in phase two, depending on the community feedback. Precisely, yeah. And an important thing as well uh, here is, as you guys have seen, they had to clean up their camp. There were too many workers inside. Mm -hmm. So and the waves stop to like, okay, now you need to clean it up, right? So they just went around, cleaned the, the workers that are that were roaming all around the camp, mm. and then uh, and then you know the waves continue going. And it's very dynamic. So uh, as we say, like depending on your performance, on the amount of players that you are, uh, the game adapts to it. So for instance, if you are playing alone and mm. you die, mm. um, we give you three lives, mm. right? So. We are being fair with you, yeah. like not to issues like, oh, you died, see you soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so that's something that only happens if you are playing alone. So yeah. this is for the long wolves that wanna, you know, there is a lot of people and uh, that prefers to play first alone. Yeah, uh, you know, to get a taste of how the game works, etc., and then they adventure into co-op, right? Yeah. And I, I think whenever we can, we want players to play their their own way, their own yeah. style. So when if you wanna, if you if you're the kind of player that uh, wants to play alone sometimes, and then you play with two or three or uh, so friends, that that's fine. That's up to you. But at the same time, we also want you to try the game as we meant it to be yeah. played. That's why we designed a co-op game. We want you to play together. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you can complete the game in any difficulty. 
mm. alone. Mm. Um, this is something that you need to be very good to complete in overkill, yeah. but <laughs> you can do it. But of course, we always uh, invite you guys to try call because it's when the game really shines, when you really have like a lot of, let's say, moment, memorable moments, right? Yeah. But um, if you play it alone, like um, it's uh, it's actually a very fun, uh, as fun as an experience, right? So. Yeah, it's really up to you guys. Like what we always, uh, our philosophy always is like, like you know, you paid for the game, so you do with it what what you want. Right? Yeah. So we are not gonna limit you. Yeah. Oh, there's cool. a lot of walkers. On. Yeah. Right now they are about to finish the camp and, defense. And I hear a car alarm. So yes. For so players that haven't seen that, or you know, viewers, what's up with the car, car alarm? So in this case here, like out in the out in the wilderness, right? Yeah. Uh, Triggering a car alarm is a very, very bad idea, yeah. right? Because then you can get a basic, <laughs> walkers will start coming yeah. through, right? In this case here, as they are finishing the level, yeah. they use now the car alarm to actually attract the walkers to where they are, to actually clean them up more efficiently and faster.